Hi there, I'm Dr. McFerrin with DM Explains. In this video, I'm going to talk about the deadbeat response of a control system. So one common goal for control systems is to achieve a fast response with minimal overshoot. This type of response is called the deadbeat response. So there are a couple of important characteristics of a deadbeat response. The first important characteristic is that the steady state error, ESS, is equal to zero. The second important thing is that it has a fast response. What that means is that it has a minimum rise time and settling time. Usually these are predetermined factors that we are trying to meet. Number three says that the percent overshoot is small. MP percent is between 0.1 and 2%. And the reason that we pick those values is that that means as soon as the signal reaches the 2% band, it stays within in it. In other words, there is no measurable overshoot outside of the settling time. And then lastly, of course, the percent undershoot is also less than or equal to 2% to make sure that the signal gets within the 2% band and stays there. And what I've just said I want to formalize as a note. I want to note that 3 and 4 require that the response enters the 2% band at the settling time, TS. In other words, the response goes to the 2% band and never ever leaves it. So if I were to draw a picture of that, this is my time domain plot. This is T in seconds. Uh, this is my response Y of T. And let's say that in red I have my reference. Then the 2% band around my reference I'll show in this dashed line. And Here's my response. It comes up but never leaves the 2% band. So how do we make sure that a system is going to achieve this? To do that, what I want to do is consider a particular transfer function. Consider the transfer function T of S, which represents the closed loop system. T of S is equal to omega n cubed over s cubed plus alpha omega n s squared plus beta omega n s plus omega n cubed. We could go to higher powers, but I'm going to use a cubic one for a higher order system. I will use alpha, then beta, then gamma, then delta, then epsilon. But what I want to do is find the values of alpha and beta to meet the deadbeat response characteristics. So here's the steps for deadbeat control design. Step number one is to find the overall system transfer function, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to normalize it. T of S, what I'll do is I'll have one over S cubed omega N cubed plus alpha s squared over omega n squared plus beta s over omega n plus 1. So what I'm going to do here is just divide out by omega n cubed everywhere. So I take my original T of s and what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by 1 over omega n cubed over 1 over omega n cubed. So I'm normalizing the system and then what I'll use is s bar is equal to s over omega n, which makes t of s equal to 1 over s bar cubed plus alpha s bar plus beta s bar plus 1. Step number two is to look up values of alpha and beta on the table. And the table that we'll use is right here. So for a second order system, I only have alpha, and I have a value of 1.82 for alpha. But for a third order system, I look at this 
third order line and I have values for alpha and beta. And it tells me what the percent overshoot should be, percent undershoot, the rise time, as well as the settling time. And so these are actually the values without omega n involved. So then omega n times ts, is, which is my desired, so this is step three, my desired settling time is equal to the normalized ts from the table. So let's say I'm on this third order. I might have a settling time. I want settling time to be less than one second. And I have this normalized settling time so I can solve this for omega n. Step four is to unnormalize. So then I've got T of S is equal to omega n cubed over S cubed plus alpha omega n S squared plus beta omega n squared s plus omega n cubed. And then I'm going to compare my coefficients to those produced by a generic controller and solve for the controller values, right? So we'll compare this to those produced by a controller and solve for the control gains. To help us understand this better, I want to look at an example. I want you to design a proportional integral controller for deadbeat response with a settling time less than two seconds if the plant GP of S or GPS if you want to find out where you're going is one over S plus one. Okay, so that's what I want. If I were to draw a block diagram of this system, I've got a reference input. I've got my uh, feedback here. I've got a controller, GC of S, here in series with GP of S, my plant. Just a sec. I said, I said in series, not hey Siri, thank you. I have an output, there's my feedback. And so what I know is Y of S over R of S is equal to GC of S, GP of S, over 1 plus g c of s g p of s so this is what we would call t of s in the steps above i know that g c of s being a p i controller is equal to k p plus k i over s which is equal to k p s plus k i all divided by s so if i plug that into my y of s over r of s I've got one over S plus one times KPS plus KI over S divided by one plus the same thing, one over S plus one KPS plus KI over S. If I want to simplify, I'll multiply by S, S plus one, top and bottom. So Y of S over R of S is equal to KPS plus KI over, and then I've got S, S plus one plus KPS plus KI. And so my T of S or Y of S over R of S in total is equal to KPS plus KI divided by S squared plus one plus KP times S plus KI. So the coefficients I'm going to be comparing here are the one over, or one plus KP and the KI. Those are what I'm gonna be comparing to my normal system. Now, before I think about this, the th one thing I want to note is this system, because I have KPS plus KI in the numerator, has an extra zero. It's got an extra zero. And so what this will do is it will increase MP percent and will speed up the system. It just depends on where that zero actually is. Let's go ahead and ignore the zero for now. So T of S is equal to KI over S squared plus one plus KP S plus KI. I know that this is a second order system 
So let's zip up to this table. It's second order system, alpha is 1.82. So alpha is equal to 1.82. And comparing this to T of S is equal to omega n squared over S squared plus alpha omega n plus or times S plus omega n squared. Comparing this, I know that alpha omega n is one plus kp and omega n squared is ki. So that's what I know. I also know that ts needs to be less than two. Let's let ts be equal to 1.9. That's less than two. So then I go back up to my table and I look at the settling time normalized. It's 4.82. So I know that omega n times 1.9 is equal to 4.82. So omega n is equal to 4.82 divided by 1.9, which is 2.54 radians per second. So then going back, I've got one plus kp has to equal to alpha omega n. kp is equal to alpha omega n, which is 1.82 times 2.54 minus one. That value is equal to 3.62. And I also know that Ki is equal to omega n squared, which is equal to 2.54 squared, which is 6.45. So now I have values for Kp and Ki. So if I go back to my transfer function and plug those things in, I know that Ki is 6.45. I also know that Kp is 3.62, and then I've got S there, and then I've got S squared plus, and then this is one plus Kp, so 4.62S plus 6.45. Am I done at this point? Absolutely not. We must, must, must check that this controller did what we expected. So let's go ahead and check in MATLAB. Okay, so why don't we test this out in MATLAB and see how the response compares to what we are desiring. T is equal to the transfer function of 3.62 comma 6.45 and then the denominator is 1 4.62 6.45 then what I want to do we can compare that that looks right I want to step t so it looks like maybe this isn't quite what I was hoping for it looks like the overshoot might too, be too big uh, I don't know about settling time, so what I need to do is verify by using something which gives me more detail. So let's use step info of t. And this tells me that the settling time is 1.88, which is pretty good. We had a goal settling time of 2 being less than 2 seconds, and we also ended up deciding that we wanted to set it at 1.9. So the settling time is actually 1.88. That's a really good. The problem, though, is that the overshoot is 5.87. And so the goal was that the overshoot would be less than 2%. So if this were real life and we were designing a controller and we had certain specifications, what I would do then is go back and iterate and see if I can drive this overshoot down. So now you've seen how you can use deadbeat response to choose gains in a controller. Hopefully you found this valuable. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.